in this lesson we are going to continue to explore the tools under the Windows menu option bar, specifically the external programs, the function call graph, the function graph, and the functions windows. And let's look at the next tool we're going to look at, external programs. This is a very simple tool. You click on it and it shows you all your shared libraries that this program needs. In this case, it's a very small, there's only one, libc.so. More than likely with any major program, at least a modern program, unlike Windows or Unix, you're going to see a bunch of libraries there. That's really all there's to it. What you can do is if you would like to link the program, if you had this, if I downloaded this library, I could right click on set external name association and actually point it to where on my computer that, that file is. And later on, you can actually link things together so you can click from one function into the actual code where it is in an external library. But don't worry about that right now. So external programs, that's really all you're going to do is see what programs exist and maybe link them. So let's close that window. Now let's go to the next one. Function call graph. And this is a neat one. Go ahead and click on function call graph. Actually don't click on it yet. First choose a function. So in this function go to the functions window and just click on main and now go ahead and click on function call graph and you can see what it does is it actually shows you the function call graph. So you can see there is a function called underscore start that calls main and then main calls these three different functions printf, puts, and isoc99 scanf. Any major program this, is, this graph could be actually huge but it's uh, very cool. You can see that here and you see it in a little um, another little window down here and that's the function call graph. What that does is help you really visualize the way the flow of the program goes and what is calling what. And that actually gets really useful later on. So let's go ahead and close this. The next window is the function graph window rather than the function call graph window, the function graph window. Remember the function call graph just shows you what functions are calling what. The function graph actually, if you're familiar with Ida Pro, is Ida's graph view basically. It shows you what's called basic blocks. These Each of these squares is a basic block and then it shows you how the call flow goes. So this is a basic block and there's a choice. There's a jump less than and if the jump less than is true, jump less than or equal to, it goes to the green flow. If it's red, it's not true, it goes to the red flow. And these are the actual assembly instructions that are occurring. And this is a really, really useful view. We're going to see and use this a lot later on. So this is a, something you're going to use all the time. And up here you have some tools that, things that you can apply on the graph. We'll see these more when we actually start to use the function called program. And down here you see a, a little mini view because again this function graph might be very large and you might want to quickly scroll around and, and change what is showing large here by using this mini viewer. But there's a very, this is a very simple function graph. There's not much to it so there's not much to do here but uh, often this function call graph could be huge. So let's go ahead and close that. So now let's look at the function window. And just click on functions, and you'll see it's actually already here. So I closed it, I got to re bring it up. And this is really useful, you're going to use this all the time. Basically, there's not much to it, it just lists all the known functions in the program and it tries to actually tell you what the functions are that is put a label in the function like isoc99 scanf if it doesn't know what the function is it just calls it fun underscore and then the memory address that it's located at for example this function right here is fun fun and then the address it starts at 
0808348340. And you can filter through functions. For example, let's say I'm looking for a function called puts. And you just click, type puts in the filter and it just gets rid of everything but the ones that match the filter. And basically what this is going to be useful for is just quickly navigating to functions you want to look at. So for example, I want to look at main. I just quickly search for main. I can scroll down or I can type in main, click on it, and code both the listings example here and the decompiler will jump straight to main. I can clear it out, jump to a different one, and again the listings, the decompile window will jump to that. So really useful this is just a list of the functions. One thing that you'll see that I like to do, let's say I know that the function is this is function, let's say I know it is a function that we'll call it does network socket. Does network socket. It doesn't, I'm just making that up. But I can hit L to rename the function, type in the function name, and then it changes the function name from fun whatever it was to does network socket. Now let's say I didn't want to do that. Let's say I, I did not want to rename that does network socket. I can actually undo that with control Z or undo which is grayed out because I just undid everything I did. But control Z or edit undo will undo the changes that you just made. We'll see more about labeling things and using this this uh, this listings window later. But that's the functions window. One other neat thing about the functions windows you can do is you can highlight two functions and click on this little C for compare and it'll actually bring those functions up next to each other so you can see them side to side. You get the decompile view and the listing view. And that's pretty cool. So that's the functions window and we're going to always just keep that open. That's a really useful window to always have open. Does your organization need instructor-led training in advanced technical topics? Paladin Group can provide that. Check out our webpage.